Hey guys, what's up? Doug, KB2 UKA. I hate having mediocre audio. I'm sure you hate having mediocre audio. Here's a quick way, cheap, easy to get, beautiful ESSB audio. Let's take a look. All right, guys, so uh, real quick, here's what we're doing. Uh, we were using the X-Air. We are not using the X-Air anymore. We're back to using um, two audio interfaces and Studio One from PreSonus. So we're just using an audio interface and a DAW. Um, here's how I'm processing the audio. Uh, it, it's pretty simple to do. Okay, so first we've got the PreSonus um, audio interface. That talks to the PreSonus software. After the audio is processed in the PreSonus software, it sends it back to the PreSonus interface. I come out of the PreSonus interface and I come in to the Focusrite interface. The Focusrite interface is my station sound card. Thetis, um, everything comes in and out of that interface. So if you look here at Thetis, I'm bringing my audio in virtual uh, ASIO, Focusrite USB ASIO. Uh, output is Focusrite USB ASIO. Windows does not like to share sound cards with multiple pieces of software. So rather than using a piece of software like Voice Meter Banana, Voice Meter Potato, I'm uh, routing the audio using two separate sound cards. All right, so uh, here we go. Um, this is my channel strip, okay? So this is my mic in on the PreSonus. I am simply running a noise gate. Uh, you'll see, there it is, it's open, one, two, three, four, five. You see that noise gate's open when I stop talking. And it's open again. So uh, that just takes um, any little room noise out. Um, it's pretty well treated in here, but you know, you get the desk hammer, uh, hitting the mic uh, stand, whatever. Well, if I really hit it, you'll hear it, but it, it cleans up the, uh, the noise in the room. Next, this is my EQ. We are running uh, the FabFilter Pro Q3. What you're gonna notice here, and this I only started doing about three, four months ago. All of my main EQing is subtractive EQing. So what you're hearing right now, this is my 4K profile. This is what it sounds locally before it gets turned into RF uh, via the Anon and Thetis. The only thing missing from my transmit audio that you're not hearing in this recording is inside Thetis, I do process and add a little bit of CFC uh, on certain frequencies and a little bit of post EQ. So I'm doing a little bit of touch up EQ inside Thetis before it turns into RF. Um, but, you know, I have pretty robust lows in my audio profile, but you'll see here everything is cut. Let me stop talking so you could see this. It's all cut. Um, there, are, there is no boosting at all happening inside my main EQ. We'll get to where I am boosting, um, which is also pretty subtle. Uh, from the EQ, we go into a compressor. And, and mind you, for those just joining the channel, these are VST plugins. Um, some of these I have from uh, uh, Waze Audio. Wave audio, excuse me. Others, these are built into PreSonus. They come with the software. Any DAW, uh, uh, Pro Tools, uh, Studio One, Ableton Live, Reaper, Cakewalk, you're going to get plugins. Um, you could go buy other plugins. You could download free plugins. 
Um, but my next uh, plugin that I use is compressor, and you'll see on very loud noise peaks, I'm hitting about 9 dB of compression on my regular spoken voice, which is this right here. Um, it's just cleaning up any spikes. I'm compressing about 3 to 6 dB. Um, I consider this light compression as it continues on in the chain. Uh, next, after the compressor, now, hold on. Now I start to add in some highs. And um, I'm adding in highs slightly here with the Apex uh, Vintage Exciter plugin. So this is a harmonic bass plugin. Um, again, anything, you know, between five and seven is relatively light on the effect. Um, but it's there and it adds a little bit of brightness. So I check my input, my output. I don't overdo it with this plugin. This plugin can make you sound tinny. It could make it sound too harsh. Um, but when it's set up just right, it, it gives a nice color to the upper mids and to the high end. And we get some of our low end next with this cool plugin called uh, R Bass Mono. I have it set at 80 hertz. And you'll notice right here when this flickers, it's applying the effect. It's a relatively also light effect. I am not overdoing it. How do I know if I'm overdoing it? How do I know if I'm EQ'd right? How do I know if I have enough compression? It is a tedious process of adjusting and recording, not recording locally here in the shack, though I can do that with another transceiver that I have. I like to record over the air two, 300 miles out into a Kiwi SDR. Check out KiwiSDR.com. Um, there's SDR receivers that people have set up all over the country, all over the world, and it has they have a great record feature. So if I'm adding my bass effect, I'll go to a dead frequency. I'll ask if it's in use. Um, I'll wait to make sure it's clear. And I'll transmit for five, 10 seconds. This is KV2 UKA doing an audio test. One, two, three, four, five. Uh, Sally sells seashells by the seashore. And then I'll listen back to it. And I'll go, ah, uh, that's too money. Uh, you know what? I think I could push a little more low end. I come back here. I make an adjustment. I record again over and over and over. And as I'm doing this, that's when I'm adding the next plugin. So, uh, of course, the EQ takes me about an hour, an hour before I'm satisfied with it. Once I'm satisfied with the EQ, I move on to the compressor. Then I move on to the exciter. Then I move on to the bass boost. Um, so that's what I have here in this channel strip. Over here is an auxiliary FX channel where I sidechain reverb. However, right now, you'll notice it's grayed out. I do not have any reverb in my profile uh, for two reasons. One, I don't like this reverb and I need to find a reverb that I like. Uh, two, the room while being treated still has ambience. So um, you could probably hear it right now. So the whole point in adding a reverb or a plating effect is to give a dead room room ambience. But if the room already has ambience and I hear it on my recordings, why add it? So I may add it, I may not add it, I had it added before, that's why it's set up here on the FX uh, channel strip, um, but right now I do have it off. Last but not least, uh, the audio from the channel strip and the FX channel strip, even though it's off, flows to the master output, which is over here. I do use two plugins on the master output. The first plugin I use is a, another EQ. Okay, this is, what is this called? I got this from uh, Waves Audio. Uh, this is a Puji Tech EQP1A. Basically, it is an emulator of the famous Pultec uh, EQ, okay? And what I'm doing here, it only has low end and high end. That's it. You could choose your low end frequency. <coughs> Excuse me. You could choose your low end frequency. And you can boost your low end frequency zero to 10, and you can attenuate your low end frequency zero to 10. There is an old uh, recording trick uh, for musicians called the Pultec bass trick. And what the Pultec bass trick is, you boost and you attenuate at the same level. And it causes a very beautiful low end effect where the low end becomes very punchy and rumbly, but clean. 
Um, so I'm not applying much. I'm doing it at 60 hertz, which is the beginning of my transmit bandwidth. I transmitted my 4K profile 60 hertz low, 4,000 hertz high. So I'm just touching that subharmonic range. Um, and remember, you've got to be on an SDR on, or on a radio that can hear 60 or lower in order to even hear what I'm doing. So this is really when I'm with my buddies who are all on SDRs and we're all listening out probably to like 20 hertz. Um, <clears throat> you, I could listen out to zero, um, but I normally do a cutoff at 20 in my, in my receive. Uh, some of that stuff under there is real nasty. And then on the high end, this is uh, what frequency I want to attenuate, okay? This is what frequency I want to add to. So I can add to 3K, 4K, 5K. I can only attenuate starting at 5K. So I don't know what this method is, but I'm, I'm adding at 5K and I'm attenuating also at 5K. Bandwidth. So I have it set to four. Uh, zero would be a very uh, sharp bandwidth um, and 10 would be a very broad bandwidth. So I have it, um, you know, re pretty even, you know, not too sharp, not too broad. So I'm hitting probably 4K here. It sounds good, so I left it alone. But I'm also boosting and attenuating at the same level. Okay, so I put one more EQ on my output, and this is all really, I, I don't want to say it's additive, but it is additive, but I'm also attenuating um, at the same level. But this is, I'm doing this to add back in certain specific frequency ranges what I removed in the first EQ. You know, some guys, <coughs> I'm sorry guys that I'm coughing on this video. Uh, some guys will, and I used to do this also, they wanna add low, they'll come here and they'll shoot this up. You know, they'll go down to 50 hertz, 60 hertz, 80 hertz, and they'll put a boost. I'd rather clean it in that first EQ stage make it nice and crisp and clear and clean, not tinny, not muddy, not robotic. Um, and that's why it takes me a very long time to do this with the EQ. And then with my effects, my Aphex, my bass booster or big bottom, whatever you wanna call it. And then with a little bit of additive EQ on the master output, okay? And then last but not least, um, I have a limiter in that's just set at minus three dB. So as loud as I yell, loud as I yell, it's not gonna go past uh, minus three dB. This stuff gets routed over here uh, to beautiful uh, Thetis. And then like I said earlier in the video, I hit it with a little CFC audio uh, compression, um, which by the way, and please comment down below, continuous frequency compressor, okay? Personally, and I'm, you know, I'm, I'm not an expert in this at all, when I add gain to these specific frequencies that I chose for this 4K profile, when I add gain, I don't, I, don't, I don't feel like this is compressing anything. I almost feel like it's expanding um, on those frequencies, which is fine if you know what you're doing. Because um, normally, like if let's say my S's were really wet uh, on the transmit, I used to come here and I'd boost, like I try to add compression at 2,500, 3,800. Sometimes I have this at 4K, but for now I have it at 3,800 to try to um, muffle the wetness of the S. And what I found is as I was boosting, the compression should have been muffling the wetness, but it wasn't. It was actually bringing it out more. Um, and, and I might be wrong, but I feel like it expands. It doesn't really compress, but it still works great. It helps me hold all my peak values in the transmitter and uh, my amplifier uh, absolutely loves it. So quick run through, um, again, running a gate, an EQ, a little bit of light compression, Aphex exciter, uh, big bottom. And then on my master output, a little additive EQ with the Poltec uh, uh, 1A and then a brick wall limiter at a minus three dB. That's it, thanks for watching, have a great day.